in the P6. It's been a video we've been waiting to do for some time. Um, lots has happened since our last video upload. And uh, we've not really had an online presence uh, in terms of videos for a little while either. So uh, I reckon roll the in intro screen and we'll uh, tell people what we've been up to. Now then, the container. I said now then because Steve in the workshop always comments I start things off with, so. You mean like you just did? Yeah, so, the container. Um, yeah, we've um, consolidated a lot of parts into here. We've got an entire piece, Rover P6, uh, excluding the body shell, the interior, drivetrain, everything. Um, we've got an entire, you probably know better than I do, Steve. There's a um, Discovery 2 complete interior. There's a P38 Range Rover complete interior. Everything's boxed up. The seats are um, all at the back there, all stacked up. This obviously isn't the container that's going to Thailand, but it's our container that we've sorted everything out into to make sure everything fits. Uh, we've got a variation of bumpers off Discoveries and P38 Range Rovers. There's a lot of classic Range Rover parts in here as well. Uh, a few sets of wheels. Um, again, P38 Discovery 2 wheels. So, uh, yeah, this will be um, not winging its way, sailing its way to Thailand imminently, uh, ready for Chris. So, uh, a lot of the parts in here are actually ordered for orders for customers, I believe, aren't they, Steve? Yes. You've, you've yeah. been communicating with quite a few customers over there. So, yeah. Um, Obviously, it doesn't. It's not a five-minute job breaking a vehicle to get all of these parts off or sourcing them off of the internet because some of the bits we didn't have, and Steve's done a really good job of actually sourcing them. Um, you are kind. Well, we try, um, and it's better than whipping you. Just saying, get on with it, isn't it? Marginally, yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, it takes time to actually everything in here actually has to be weighed uh, for customs and everything, so uh, it's all uh, documented. Um, what else have we been doing? Holly's been building a lot of engines. More than he can fit on the wall. More than he can fit on the wall, the stands, anywhere. Should we go and have a look? Yeah, go on then. Right, Holly has been incredibly busy with engines. Um, three nines here, this is a three nine, this is a three nine, this is a three nine. I'm just waiting for three nine pistons to come into stock, which will be tomorrow actually. This is another 4 litre engine for uh, the dyno test cells we build them for. Um, it's been a little bit of a feature of that on our Facebook page of us running an engine up in a car here of, um, for emissions reasons. Um, this is a 4.6 stage 3 engine going over to Belgium which takes us on to the build spec wall in a second. However, um, as I said we've been really busy and this is just a few of the engines that Holly's built last month. So in the last three, four weeks, because obviously we had Easter in the middle. So we've got a 3.9 that went over to Holland for a Range Rover Classic. We've got a 4.6 that went into a P38 Range Rover. Um, we've got a 4.6 Stage 3 that went up to Leicester. We've got a 4.6 Merlin engine, which again you would have seen on our Facebook page, went out to Ireland. We've got the 4.6 Stage 3 that went into the Chevy pickup truck, one of my favourite little cars we've had pictures sent through to. That was up in Scotland. And then we have a 3.9 here that went into a 90, all built in March, including this one as well, 4.6 short engine for an MGB, and the 4.6 stage 3 that's going to Belgium, which is this one here behind me. So this month, Holly is going to build, oh hang on, he also built this one, which is the 4.6, we just went out for road testing. Or we're now one, going out for road testing? Where are we in I this think video? A bit, bit of both. Ah, the intro was done in the car, and we're now going out for road testing it. So that was a 4.6 that we built up as well. Now to build, we've got a 3.9 Stage 1 from Morgan, 
a 3.9 standard engine going over to Holland for an 85 classic Range Rover, a 4 litre for a Discovery 2, a 3.9 for a Morgan Plus 8 that sat in our workshop that you guys haven't seen yet, a 3.5 for an MGB GT, a 4.6 stage 1 for a Cobra, that will be coming down to be installed. I think you spoke to the customer today, didn't you? Yes. You did. There you yeah. go. That's your engine spec, Mick. And then um, a, what's this? A 3.9 stage one for a left-hand drive classic Range Rover in Switzerland. So, um, that's Holly busy for the next few weeks. And the rest. Should we go and do that road test that we've already started and filmed in the P6? We'll travel through time ah. and space. Shall I click and the fingers and we'll just go? Ready? Did you, um, did you cut to that? I think so. Oh, okay, cool. So the P6 then. Um, we've actually been here doing this video once before. We have. But, but everyone watching didn't see it. Well, we had no idea what engine it had in. We did. We got, <laughs> we got a little bit muddled, didn't we? Um, so the story of this P6 um, came into us with a uh, 3.9 that we built up a while back and the uh, customer then built the car around it. Obviously it's a fairly custom build on air and uh, on an air ride system. Um, so we can, you know, drop down and raise up and all that sort of stuff. Um, when videoing it, we had an issue. The car hadn't actually been on the road. It had just been for an MOT the day before it was dropped us to, off to us. And on our road testing, the customer said, look, you're gonna have to do a shakedown test. It's not been anywhere. Do a spanner check, etc." All of that was done. And we started to get a bit of a weird noise on the front end. So we returned to the workshop pretty quick and uh, found the front wheel bearings had worked themselves loose, uh, which it then repeated itself again. So um, we went and redid the front wheel bearing area, uh, new hub seals and bits as well. God, it sounds nice. Oh yes. And uh, yeah, on videoing, as Steve will now splice in, we got a little bit confused with the engine size when we were actually out enjoying the car, didn't we, Steve? It was amateur hour, I would say. With something like that, yeah. Really nice. 
nicely. Still a standard engine, but it's 4.6 in capacity. So standard heads and uh, pipe and torque max camshaft. Weber 500 carburetor, RPI ignition kit. Tested and proven setup that we've done hundreds, if not over a thousand times. And uh, yeah, um, I'm not gonna slow down because it'll annoy the lorry driver behind me, but I would show you how slow it'll go in fifth. We'll do that in a little while, I think. speed of 14, 15 miles an hour? Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. There's an S-bend down the bottom here. We'll stay in fifth for the whole thing, shall we? Still fifth, hang on. Right, flat piece of road now, it's 15 feet off the pedals. We're not That's lumping it. about, look there, there's Steve, look, yeah, see. There they are. There they are, look. Yeah, um, we're still. Yeah, fifth. fifth. I wonder, there's a, uh, around this right hand corner, there's still nothing behind me, there's a bit of an uphill incline, because yeah. you don't get many uphill down climbs. Um, let's just see if it'll tick over in fifth to pull up it, shall we? I reckon it will. Yeah. So it's fifth feet off the pedals. We're at 20 now because of the downhill we just went down. So it's now slowing down to 15. We're ticking over in fifth gear on a 4.6 uphill at 15 miles an hour. Okay, 12 miles an hour. Still doing it though. Still doing Look, it. Look, feet are still off the pedals. They are. But can it accelerate? But we'd know if you were on the pedals because we'd hear it. Yeah. Is it accelerating? Fifth gear uphill, 15 miles an hour. It is now. 20 miles an hour. Doing it. 30 miles an hour. Yeah. No complaints there? No. That's rather impressive. I hope that baby in that pram is not asleep. <laughs> We're not anymore. We'll, we'll shut off on the loud pedal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, back in the back cave then. There's one last bit for this video, Steve. All right. Well, when I asked this customer about, you know, is it okay to put your car on social media and do videos? He said, yep, as long as you do one thing for me. So, um, Ted, this is for you. 